Hello and welcome. In the last section, we learned advanced query techniques such as using joints, paging, and accessing data from store procedures and views. In this section, we will concentrate on performance and scalability aspects of using entity framework. We will start with scalability, then we will learn how we can profile queries and log the performance, and finally we will discuss general performance tips. In this video, we will discuss scalability topics and the synchronous code. We will start by understanding the difference between performance and scalability of .NET Core applications. We will explore Entity Framework Asynchronous API, and we will convert an API controller that is currently using synchronous mode to asynchronous code. Let's get started. Performance, generally speaking, in our applications is the application ability to perform at high execution speed. There are many ways we can improve Entity Framework core performance. Some of those we covered in previous course and some we're gonna cover in this section. Scalability refers to application's ability to serve more clients requests on the same hardware. This is where I sync await keywords and test-based API in .NET and .NET Core come in. Entity Framework Core has full support for a sync API that's baked in to begin with. This covers both save operations and query operations. Most query functions have a synchronous counterpart. Let's look at our controller and convert it to a sync while exploring Entity Framework Core capabilities to run code asynchronously. Let's start with the method that gets a list of data which is person info object in our case. First, we have to change the signature of the method to be test-based. We do that by adding the result to be task of I action result, and we also have to flag the method itself as async using async keyword. Now we need to convert some of our data. So first of all, we need to use await keyword. And to do that, we need to make sure that we call in an awaitable method. In this case, there is a to list, which has a counterpart using a sync suffix called to list async. Generally speaking, that's what we're going to see in most query methods that use async. It's the same as regular any other method, except it has async keyword in. Let's see how that looks when we use first or default method. We can change the signature of a single person method to be that. Then again, we're gonna use await keyword and we're gonna use first or default async instead. We will discuss no tracking a little bit further. In this case, that's all we really need to do. And for save operation, we need to do slightly different way. However, what we need to do is simply await save changes in this case, which actually is firing all the save queries against the database. And as you would have guessed, there is a save changes async method that we need to call to perform the same. And that's really all we would need to do in this method. Now that we know that, you could probably figure out that to convert the update method, we virtually need to do the same thing, same with delete. All we need to do is await save changes async instead of just calling it synchronously. Here we go. We went through the process of updating our controller to be fully async to provide better scalability. When it comes to aggregates, they also have all async counterparts. For example, if we do first or default async, we could change it to call the sum method. And in sum, we could simply say, we want to sum up, sum up, say, height. And to do that, all we need to do is change sum to sum async. And uh, that's all there is 
to it when it comes to using async API with entity framework core and inside our web API controllers inside ASP.NET core.